and Chief Counsel of the Lakota People's Law Project. He uh, went to Harvard College and law school. He is a constitutional lawyer on the right side of law. In the Iron Contra case, Watergate, Pentagon Papers, Three Mile Island nuclear plant shut down, the Greensboro Massacre against the KKK and the American Nazi product, Project Party. Yikes. And he uh, worked on behalf of Standing Rock. I've, I've known and seen Danny Sheehan throughout my life. He is a wonderful man, and I am honored to introduce y'all to him. Well, I'm, I'm used to being uh, part of the youth uh, when, when, we, when we sort of came on the scene uh, back in the 60s. Uh, everybody kept telling us that we were too young to be listening to them. Uh, and it turns out that it stays that way uh, all the way through. So uh, don't, don't feel that you're being discriminated against as the young, uh, because it's not your youth that they're afraid of, it's what you're saying. And it's what you're saying that they try to disregard all the time. And so what you have to do is you have to build alliances. It's the thing that we came to know uh, over all the years. You have to build alliances with the young people, with the, the middle-aged people, with the older people, all the people that are still coming on into the stream, the young, the really young kids. You know, this is, this is a coalition that you have to build. When we did the Karen Silkwood case, which uh, ended up stopping the construction of all private nuclear power plants in the United States. That, that, uh, that Sarah Nelson, our executive director over here, uh, was, the, was the National Labor Secretary for the National Organization for Women, uh, and I was the legal counsel for the United States Jesuit Order. And so if we can put together an alliance between the National Organization for Women and the Jesuit Order, we ought to be able to get an alliance uh, among everybody here. Wow. Because, because it's in everybody's interest to stop global climate change, except for the petroleum companies and the fossil fuel industry. Now, the, the fact of the matter is, as you know, there's a lot fewer of them than there are of us. But the fact of the matter is, the structures of the system are structured in a way to give them much more influence. As long as you rely upon a vanguard theory of social change. The vanguard theory of social change is that you sort of go to the elite and you ask them to voluntarily agree to stop doing things that are to their advantage. Now you can imagine that that doesn't work that well. <laughs> And what we have, we've had for many, many years, we've had the courts that we were able to go to to force that elite to stop doing some of the things that they were doing, like in the Karen Sokwood case, or in the Iran-Contra case where they were smuggling weapons down to the Contras that had already been overthrown and thrown out by a popular revolution, but the American Central Intelligence Agency was still providing weapons and explosives for all of them. Uh, and so we went to the courts to try to get them to stop doing that. And that was the beginning of the point in time in the 1980s when Ronald Reagan and George Bush came into power when the courts started being taken over by all of the extreme right-wing elements because it was after the end of the Cold War that the robber barons who had risen to power back between the end of the American Civil War I know that the Vietnam War probably seems to a lot of you young folks like the Civil War. But, but, it, but it, it turns out that, that in the aftermath of the American Civil War, the, the elite that were in charge of the major uh, businesses in the country developed a new theory of uh, a new business vehicle called the shareholder-owned private corporation. And the corporation started being designated as a person and the person was supposedly invested with all of these fundamental rights that belong to a human being. And that was designed by their corporate lawyers that they put into the courts. And it's important for us all to understand here on the eve of pushing to try to get the courts to, to protect us uh, against environmental uh, change, that we need to understand that the Trump administration is getting ready to appoint 236 new federal judges. 
236 new federal judges. And they're, they're assaulting these judges into the courts where they don't have control yet. For example, five new judges are being appointed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And it's the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals that we're dealing with here. And they've already appointed you know, five full justices to the United States Supreme Court. And they're hanging out, getting set to do more, if they possibly can. So it's extremely important that you start to understand at this point that there is a, a mobilization that needs to be undertaken on the grassroots level where we have to mobilize and organize and go door to door talking to people all across the country to get them to throw these people out of office. That that's the key to this thing, to throw them out of office. Uh, and that has to be done through the state legislatures and the, and the, the state assemblies, the, the state senates, all the way through the country. The fact of the matter is, I'm here to tell you that, that I have, over a 50-year period, uh, probably have one of the highest win rates in the court system of anybody that you're ever going to meet, uh, ever since coming out of law school and winning the case of Eisenstadt versus Baird that established the right of unmarried people to have access to birth control. That was the very first case I ever did. Uh, and I was in Attica prison and everybody was killed there. And we got the case overruled where they were blaming their inmates for killing the, the, uh, the, the hostages. And we've done the Iran Contra case. We've done all these cases. So I'm not speaking to you out of a position of weakness. We've won these cases. But I'm trying to tell you right now that you have to supplement the action that you're doing in the courts now with grassroots organizing and public education. You need to go on every single radio station that you can get on. You want to go on to every television station, every local television station show that you can get on. You have to take this country by storm. That you represent the second largest generation in the history of the world. You know, after the baby boomer generation. And the good news is that there's enough of us left to be allies with you, okay? So that's, that's I'm, I'm just trying to get the message through to you that I'm completely supportive of the action. I'm completely familiar with every single step that's been taken in your case. It's gone back and forth and back and forth, you know, from the district court to the to the magistrate to back to the district court, up to the court of appeal, uh, up to the court of appeals, up to the three judge panel, up to the on bank, all the way to the Supreme Court. Now we have the United States Supreme Court, completely controlled by five extremely reactionary justices who have taken the extraordinary step of reaching down all the way to the district court, trial court level to stop a trial. To stop the trial because they're afraid of the evidence that would come in. Okay, So that you need to understand that this is their ball game, controlling the courts right now. But until we regain control over the courts, which I think we're going to be able to do, but it's going to take a decade to be able to get control of these courts. So you have to now, with the, with the verve and vigor of youth, you have to join with us, who still have enough verve and vigor left to work with you on this, to get out into the streets, uh, to demonstrate, to get into the, to, into the homes of people by knocking on the doors and going to visit them, going to all of the meetings of the labor unions and the teachers associations, the PTA meetings, everywhere that you can get a chance to be heard and to demand the steps be taken by all the citizenry to put people into the representative legislative positions to change these laws. That has to be done because you are not going to be able to rely exclusively upon the courts any longer for the next decade or more. And that's all we have. We only have this coming decade to turn this around and to bring this global climate change to a stop. Okay, we know what the seriousness of this is. You know what the seriousness of it is. And so that this has to be done, and it has to be done with a revolutionary zeal. A revolutionary zeal. Because you do not want to have happen what is the only alternative here. The only alternative is a major revolution against these people, and they have a lot of guns, they have a lot of armored personnel carriers and tear gas. We faced it. We faced it up at Standing Rock when they mobilized. They put a thousand troops into the field against the unarmed Lakota people. 
and they tear gassed them, they shot them with rubber bullets, they threw uh, canisters of explosives at them, you know, they arrested, you know, 842 of us, you know, and put, put them in jail. We fought them to a standstill. We've gotten over 700 of those cases acquitted yeah. uh, now. And, and, we, and so that I'm, I'm telling you, we're, we're fighting this, this fight on the judicial level, but you have to fight it at the grassroots level, just like this, just like friends and neighbors. You have to go door to door in these other places. We have to get out into the congressional districts, out into the other Senate districts, and in this place, of course, this place, this place voted for Dennis Kucinich. You know, I mean, they, here in our in our district. You know, so that we're all here of like mind in this. But we've got to. You have to talk to your relatives who live in other states, in other congressional districts, your friends, your relatives, kids you go to school with. This is this is an emergency situation, and you have to do this if you're going to avoid gunplay. Because this thing that you're seeing right now with people sending letter bombs to people, pipe bombs to people, uh, breaking into the, the Jewish uh, temples and shooting people down, this is what the alternative is. If we don't do our job and get out there and persuade all of the people to join with us, this tiny minority of people are going to mobilize and try to intimidate all of us through violence. So this is what the alternative is. We have to show that love and compassion and solidarity and a positive attitude can always defeat violence.